speaking on victims and trauma and everything, we should really jump into our big topic because we are running out of time. <laughs> and this one's going to take up quite a quite a big chunk. Time. We're just oh, in time, bro. Look. Well, all right. Don't we have so, don't we have our guest coming in? Is that what um she uh, she's nah, gonna come nah. in when she can. Shells, okay. shells, shells. She's gonna come in when she so, uh, uh think like nine twenty. Mr. Cauliflower's mind. Do you want to kick this off, or do you want me to kick it off? Um. Well, you know what? I definitely want to give uh beauty before age. Kick it off. All right. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So, I, I thought you were setting up the fucking joke, and you were gonna be like, "I'm gonna put beauty for age," so I'm gonna go first. Well, the joke yeah, right. is, oh, you know what? I didn't think of that. I'm not as witty as you, John. Um, it's actually age before beauty, and then you choose the other person. But you know what? Not my style. I love for you guys to thrive, man. That's that's what's up. All right. So first, we're going we to speak about Kenosha and all the fuckery that's been going on within it. And first off, I got to say, I did not know Kenosha was a real place. I thought it was some shit they made up for that 70s show. Because, like, is it really a point place, Wisconsin? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I barely know Wisconsin's a state. Anyway, my man, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jacob Blake, is it? That's the young man's name? He was shot seven times in the back by a police officer. And yeah. I was reading and reading into it. One side is saying that he was there breaking up a fight between a couple women. Another side saying that he was there with a restraining order against him and he was fighting the women. I don't know which one is true. All I know is he was in a place and the police rushed him. Apparently, they tried, they deployed a taser on him. Did not take, did not work. He ran around his vehicle to his front seat. His children were in the car. Story told that I just read today that the cop grabbed him by the back of his shirt and shot him seven times in the back. Did you see that video? Up I close. did not watch the video. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I, I'm tired of watching police shoot citizens. Like I, I, I've, I just can't do it no more. I've seen it way too much in the past eight years. I really don't want to see it anymore. And there's things that go to my mind. He was not reaching for a gun because there was no weapon in the car, no gun in the car. There was a knife in the car, but was he reaching for? I don't know. Did he have it on him already? I don't know. They did find a knife on his floorboard. That's all I know. First thing that comes to my mind is you can't shoot a man in the back for any reason whatsoever. That is the thing that they drill into your head in the police academy, I have a friend that went through it in Ohio, and she's like, I went through the officer training, and they drilled through your head the entire time. Do not shoot anyone in the back. It is a crime. They are not proving a threat. Do not shoot them in the back. So you can't shoot them in the back once, let alone seven times. The stand your ground and castle law that we have here in Florida, somebody breaks into my house. If I shoot them in the back on their way out. I'm being charged with attempted murder, if not murder, because you cannot shoot people in the back. Not only is it cowardly, but they're not harming you. They're not in a position to harm you unless they're doing some ill matrix shit and they're shooting at you like this. That does which, happen, by the way. It does happen, but not as often as you like. This is not a John Woo movie. So aim is up well is is way off that's for sure yeah, yeah. which is why so, you never about killing that way <laughs> <laughs> so because because this man got shot in his back seven times people began protesting because apparently in Kenosha there's a history of people of color being targeted brutalized by the police and then we'll just put that out there. And there was a few days of rioting and looting because you can't have one out without you have the peaceful protest. And then whether it be an outside influence that came to just stir up trouble or people paid to come and stir up trouble, trouble happens. Pandemonium. So, so within these four days of peaceful protesting and then rioting and looting, 
there was a group of militia that came to Genosha or Kenosha. Kenosha. I'm thinking X Men, but yeah, came to Kenosha, and they came to protect businesses and structures and everything from rioters and whatnot. Among these militia was a 17-year-old boy from Illinois with aspirations of being a cop. This kid was armed with an AR-15 rifle. I thought his mom brought him there. His mom did bring him there. Okay. Pause, 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 okay. pause. So as we're building, those of you that are listening are going to check out the show in the future, um, remember that each individual person in this panel has their – their information based on what they've already read, etc. And this is one of the highlights of this show is that you're going to hear four different angles of the same thing. So there's not anything set in stone. We're giving the information as we received it. Continue. So it was reported that this young man wanted to be a cop. He came from Illinois. His mother drove him the 30 miles to uh, Kenosha. And he was there with this militia to, you know, prevent people from destroying property and whatnot. That was the ultimate goal. Then uh, the police were, they well received this militia and this kid. Any other time in the world you see a 17 year old child with a rifle, He's things are kind of like, yo, you, you shouldn't be here in, in, in public with this rifle. That's just a no. I was conditioned by from Chris Rock from the Columbine. If I see young white males with with weapons, that's who I'm scared of. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this kid gets into an altercation. I don't know why he shot the first guy. I really don't know. I don't know what the cause was. Somebody said they seen him through a Motov or something, but he shot the first guy in the head. He's on the phone with somebody. He's like, oh, my God, I just killed somebody. And you see him running away from the video. Then he's running again down the street. People just seen this man, this kid, shoot a man, run up and try to apprehend the kid and stop this kid from shooting more people. And unfortunately, the first guy got shot in the chest and he lost his life. And the other guy, uh, he got shot in the arm. And I think I, I, I heard he lost the arm, but... I'm not 100 percent on that. You're gonna have to do your own research. I want his bicep got shredded, gone because yeah. they were saw the, they, the guy with the skateboard was chasing the kid down. The kid fell on the ground, rolled over, sat, sat, uh, stood up, and started plop 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 plop, and oh, letting off shots. Two, really. What's up? I gotta I gotta be the number two speaker so you guys can build off of it. What's up, mm-hmm. Justin? Oh, well, no, no, I just got a couple questions um, because okay. I know you're really going to delve into it. Nope. But you're not. No, you may want to save your question until after you hear these two different sides. Okay, okay. All right. Luch. All right. And then just, just to wrap it up real quick, he shot two other people. So two people died and one person pretty much lost an arm because he was out there busting his gun. When the police spoke about it yesterday, their words exactly were, well, maybe if they weren't out past curfew, they wouldn't have been injured. They wouldn't have been hurt. Which is by far a terrible thing to say when people lost their lives. And it's almost like they have no disregard for it. They're justifying it. In a way, yes. Let me uh, find this find this real quick it'll take me two seconds all right it's a great way to go to a screeching hole a great way to go to screeching hole they said we are our own sound effects thank you yeah <laughs> all right he said all right right here Everybody involved was out after the curfew. I'm not going to make a great deal of it, but the point is that the curfew was in place to protect. Had persons not been out in violation of that, perhaps the situation that unfolded would have not happened. 
and he said that the kid, uh, his name is Kyle Rittenhouse, he was involved in the use of firearms to resolve what other, whatever conflict was in place. Cool. Should I? You, yeah, yeah. You, you go right ahead. All right. So I was watching this like a hawk because that's what I do. And before anybody makes a judgment, white boy going to give his white boy, white boy style. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm white chocolate. <laughs> There's a difference. So I don't have a, a particular angle. And for me, it is a travesty. When I watch two gangsters go to war, and let me give you a real small backdrop. My friends used to be in Nation, both nations, and I'm not going to give too much information, but for those of you that know the gang world, it's real. And I was always the guy that was friends with both of them, and I, I got stuck in this gray area, and I never wanted to join with anyone because I like people. So I would watch these guys destroy each other, and it, it's horrible, man. It's horrendous. It shouldn't be that way. It's just, it's wrong. And so watching one group of friends kill the other group of friends, it's not like I can't take sides because you guys are killing each other for your own reasons. And I could take sides, I guess, if I wanted to, but the only side I can take is stop. Think that's it. Live, live tomorrow. Let this moment pass because I know you're both angry. And if you can just give it like 24 hours, your feelings might change. And if you can give it 48 hours after the 24, everything may change. So just chill, slow down. And that is a message for the people that are going through this right now. So leading into what I saw on the videos, I watched it from different angles. I watched the left angle, meaning the liberal slash Democrat or left-leaning Democrat. And then I watched the right angles, meaning the conservative and the Republican side of things. So I'm getting all this information from both sides. And that's how I connect the dots. Number one, I don't believe the media. If you study media and media tactics for long enough, you're going to see that they can make you believe anything. They can make you believe it's in your best interest to drink poison because that's what's going to save you. And that's just the power of media. So uh, we actually had a conversation about that earlier before the show about you know, the things we say, we got to make sure not to poison our listeners. So that being said, I watched. And if you watch the right wing side, you'll watch a kid getting chased down by a bunch of arsonist thugs that are creating havoc and protecting himself. And if you watch the left wing side, you'll see a kid who was out there to start trouble and people were trying to prevent him from starting trouble and attacking him. And they got murdered in the process. So I understand that everybody's going to have the way they want to believe it. I'm not with either of you. I want to make that crystal clear. And I don't know, you know, what goes through other people's mind. I'm not with either of you. Um, the thing that bothers me, and I had to retract something that I said to someone else, the kid who was out there, number one, 17 year old kid, 40 miles from home. I know it's a different culture, you know, wherever you're at in the States, et cetera. I don't let my son go too far. I just, it's a bad idea. Cross so, state lines too. Cross state lines too. Now, one of the things that I saw was this kid was wiping, the, the kid who did the shooting was wiping down walls that had already been vandalized in protest and trying to clean the walls, et cetera. So he was up there as kind of like a community service thing. Wait, don't get bent out of shape yet. I don't know all the details. I wasn't there. And rather than being a hypocrite and saying the kid was there on community service, I'm just going to tell you the things that I have seen and you get to decide for yourself what you want to believe because I don't want to, I don't want to tell you what to believe. I am not a virtue signaler. You need to make up your own mind and you get to live and die as you please. So then I watched the other side and they're calling him KKK this and that. And, you know, I'm looking for information for the KKK connection and I can't find it. So I do understand that people want to alienate whatever they don't like. But when you lie to take it to a bigger extreme, that's not the right way to back your story. 